YouTube, what's the deal, man? This is Befriending the Bots. Don't even know what episode we're on. I'm going to try to pump these out every single day. Got the setup legit. My office is popping, so I just definitely need to get this content out. Help you guys with your Madden game. And today, uh, I'm going to try to help you guys something that's really underrated. Uh, I know all you guys underrated is never talked about. Uh, and that's special teams. It's three phases of football, and they win so many games. You guys should be watching the Madden Bowl now. Uh, if you're not, I believe it's every day, 5 p.m., the Madden Bowl is on. So you're watching some of the best players in short games where special teams matter. You know, whether they can kick field goals from 62 yards or punt somebody into the corner. Uh, just little things about the game. Uh, you also see some people, including Vault, uh, implement a fake punt. And because he has a fake punt, you people like to run quarters three deep, which is the best fake punt defense. But because of that, now they have no punt return setup. So Volt can just boot 80-yard punts and not worry about trying to get cute and get it out of bounds because they have no return man back there. There's so many different things to special teams that really go unnoticed, absolutely unnoticed. Uh, and, and I'm going to break down a couple of those things. Hopefully you guys uh, use these and get better at you know punting and kicking the ball because it can win you games. And if you guys are watching these big tournaments, it definitely has caused some people to be in better positions, worse positions, whatever it may be. Uh, but let's get into the film. Let's get into the practice mode where you can go and practice all these things all the time. Um, I got the Patriots right now. We're going to go to field goal first, man. Because field goal, I, I just want to show you some simple things. Now, Befriend and Boss, this is a series where I, I, I can't assume you guys know things. You know, I got to go to the to the very basics. Uh, and that's this, 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 this meter. You know, if you want to kick a further field goal, you got to put your trajectory down, the left stick down, because it will change the trajectory. It won't be as high, and it will go further. Now, essentially, uh, in real life, right, what happens is if they kick the trajectory lower to football, it's more likely to get blocked because it's lower to line. They can jump and get a fingertip on it. So uh, that's why you see a lot of times those far field goals, you know, 60 yarders, 58 yarders, they're more likely to be blocked than a 30 yarder because the trajectory of the ball is different. So you see here, I'll do this. This is what, where are we on? 47 yarder, you know, fairly easy. So you get back here, let, let's just see the difference in punting. Here we go, we're at the 40 yard line. So this is a 57 yard field goal with Goskowski. You see us there, you see how the tra tra trajectory, I won't even change it and we'll see where the kick goes. Full power, we'll see if we can boot this in here. It's short. That's because I did not change that left stick. Same thing. You see, it's going to be short. You know. Just change the left stick. Another thing, you got to account for the wind. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't pay attention to the wind. And then we go put it down there. Wind is three miles an hour towards me. Full power. That time, I put the left stick down. Goskowski hit the camera, so that field goal would be good. Think I don't know. Man cheats you sometimes. Uh, but one thing is, like, if you forget the wind, and we see people do this, you know, sometimes it's worth coming out in field goal and actually, you know, looking at the wind and calling a timeout if you're, if you, you know, if you're in that good of a position to be able to waste timeouts. Also, if it's two minutes and thirty seconds left in the game, uh, you can run the ball, have the clock running. You know, you want to take it a two-minute warning to shorten the game, but instead of just sitting at your play call screen or chewing clock. Come out and field goal. That way you can look at the wind. You know you're not going to snap the ball because it's going to the two-minute warning. And that way you can know what the wind is. Because the wind affects everything differently. Like the real nerds really know all this stuff. I'm going to be the first one to tell you. I really don't know all these things. You know? But uh, it, like I said, Mutt, everybody probably has 99 kick power at this point. But the biggest thing with this is uh, you definitely want to hold left down. And and also, this is just like physics. Like it's it, the ball will travel further on a straight line. You know, if you say you're hitting a 57 yarder and you want to go right down the middle, which is an easier kick, essentially there's a little, there's probably about a yard difference between a straight line and right down the middle for Goskowski. You know, I think he made that one. Yeah. Whereas if I kept it, now it's going to be a harder kick, but if I aimed for this part of the goalpost, it's going to, be, you know, it's going to travel further. Oh, never mind. I just completely lied, but. You know, I think I was in full power on that one. But a straight line is shorter than a little one off to the to the left or right. But field goals are field goals. The biggest thing I want to show you guys, 
just a simple tip that people, I, you guys might not know, you know. Um, and that's punting. Punting the ball, uh, it sounds stupid. But uh, one, I, I, I think personally I always do, uh, it used to be like max max protect or, you know, max coverage. I pretty much just do punt. I don't know. I don't know if you guys dab on any of these other ones, punt tight and all this stuff. I just do punt. Right, so let's go ahead and put them in a punt return, some type of punt return middle. Now, this is a ridiculous spot to punt the ball from. Let's say, all right, we're here. Uh, we're on the, the 34-yard line. Now, we want to punt. We want to get this thing. I, we can't punt it to the end zone, I don't think. You know, let's see where we actually can punt it straight up. I'll show you guys how far. You, you never want to punt into the end zone. It's the cardinal rule of football. And uh, him not catching that punt, I, I hate as we get the most beautiful punt because he didn't catch it, you know. Uh, one thing about this game, I, I wish, you know, hopefully somebody, yeah, you realize, but I wish you could change coaching suggestions. Always catch, catch a punt. Always. Always go catch a punt because uh, I should be able to control whether I fair catch, whether I let it go, or whether I, you know, try to return it right there. A fair catch would have saved me 10 yards. If I returned it for another 10 yards, that would have been 20 yards. But okay, now we know we can't kick it that far. Now, the the number one thing you have to know, one, you have to play with your controller on vibrate. I don't know if you guys, some people turn that off, some people don't. But uh, if, you, if you go left or right, right, as soon as your controller starts vibrating, that means you're going to kick it out of bounds. So you want to get right to where you're vibrating, pause, and then kick it. You know, I went to the right wide side here. Most of the time, I try to go short side. Kind of goes with the sh same line as, look at that punt. Boom. Now we get him at the, at the. you know, he can't return it. He can't do nothing. I don't have to worry about attacking Tyreek Hill. I don't have to worry about attacking, you know, Devin Hester, whatever it may be. Once again, I like going short side because it changes the line is longer. The ball will go further. There we go. As soon as it vibrates, stop. And we'll see where this goes. Now, it goes in. Do you want to get a perfect kick? Uh, that one, the wind got me a little bit, as you see, adjust to that three-mile-an-hour wind. But he's still able to return it. We have three-mile-an-hour wind going back and to the right. So now you want to go, okay, a little bit of wind. I see a, I vibrate here. Let's go left a little bit more. Full out of bounds here. Accurate kick. That's important in these. You want an accurate kick. Better, 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 better. Not perfect, but better. Last thing I'll tell you about this. Here we go. And uh, this is what people do to punt. This is how you see those guys getting those punt dots, as they say. Uh, let's change the spot of the ball. This is probably the biggest thing, because most of you guys probably know this. If you don't, I mean, I'm glad I could help you. But say we're, we're at the 48, right? And we get to a fourth and eight or something late in the game. We want to pin them back, right? Now, we can do the same trick, but what you have to realize about when you're punting here is that um, the vibration will start in the back of the end zone, like when it goes out of bounds. So essentially because, let's see how far I can kick the ball. So essentially, I see how far I can kick the ball, all, uh, probably all the way out the back of the end zone. Right? Okay. So that's the distance on this punt. So essentially, when you take this to the left, it's going to start vibrating when I can hit out of bounds in the back of the end zone. And you don't want the punt to go to the back of the end zone. This is a bad punt. Flat out bad punt. Right? But I aimed it to when I started vibrating. So when you're in this close to your, your opponent's end zone, right? You definitely have to, okay, it's vibrating, but that's at the back of the end zone. Let me go left a little bit more. Try to get what they say, a punt dot. And, and another thing with that, I don't really know where that was. Probably the 10-yard line, something like that. Another thing with these punts is you don't got to get it to the one-yard line, man. Just make sure you don't get it in the end zone. Being at the 14 is way tougher than being at the 20. Also, mentally for the for the player, like when the ball goes in the end zone, if I'm getting the ball back with a money drive and that ball goes in the end zone, I have a deep sigh of relief. And honestly, maybe it could be better as we go with the trajectory line to kick it to the wide side in these situations. Let's see if I can dot it. Maybe a little bit better. I mean, they should tell you where these punts are. The way I feel, if I don't see it in the end zone, it's a pretty good, pretty good punt. You know, but these are these are a huge deal if you want to win late games, if you want to be able to, uh, you know, close out a game. If you're up three, 
don't want them to get into the end zone. But the main thing with this video, man, learn the line and trajectory on your punts. Also, uh, I said the vibration is key. That's when you're essentially kicking it out of bounds. So learn how to play with that. Learn how to utilize that feature in the game that maybe not a lot of you guys realize that that's in the game. But as soon as your controller starts vibrating, that means the kick is going to go out of bounds, man. But like I said, the front bots, I'm doing a series like this every day. So anything you guys uh, need help with, uh, I've heard route concepts all the time. Uh, I have a bunch of them. I'm going to break down easy ones for you guys to help you uh, get a little bit better, man. And like I said, it is May. Uh, we are dwindling down Madden 21 or Madden 20, getting ready for Madden 21. But essentially, all these tricks, all these little tips will carry over. You don't learn these in one day. You don't learn all this stuff in, in one sitting. Uh, everything I learned from Madden uh, essentially goes back to Madden 06, Madden 04. Whatever I started playing Madden, uh, you learn a little bit every year, and it just you know translates in the other year and in, in the standard first. So anything you can add to your game, even late in the year, will help you continue to become a better man player. So comment below on what you guys really need help with and what is confusing you, what do you don't understand. There are no dumb questions in the Befriending the Bots series.